Hey guys, it's Jeff. Welcome back to our basement series. Today we are starting the process of soundproofing the theater room. We've got to build some walls, we've got to do some insulation, we've got to get our green board up, but first, got to grab the putty pads. So right, the first step in soundproofing is stopping air transfer. And whenever you've got electrical, you've got to seal those boxes up real tight. So you either use plastic boxes and a little spray foam, or you use putty pad around your metal boxes. My electrician installed metal, so padding it up. We're gonna show you how to apply these things so you can get an air seal around all of your boxes. Listen, here's the system. You peel off plastic from one side so that you can keep clean and wrap this bad boy up we're gonna stretch it out as we go mm. make sure you get all around the back of it there we go seal up your wire protrusions there we go try to keep it nice and tight to the box so you're not gonna affect your drywall installation there we are okay yeah one pad per plug. All right, don't try to be cheap. This doesn't stretch like putty. It's a little more dense than that. So you're only gonna get one pad on each one of these electrical boxes. And if you have a big double box, you're gonna need two pads for one of those. As you can see, this is R20 fiberglass insulation. It is the next gen fiberglass though, okay? So I recommend wearing some kind of a mask when you're working with it. But the reality is you can see a couple fibers flying around. <sighs> for the most part this stuff is non-itch okay it is a lot nicer to work with than the old generation stuff we're going to want to put an r20 or at least an r14 bat in the wall it's okay if it gets compressed we're looking for mass not for thermal break so if you put an r20 insulation here and it compresses because r20 is for a, a two by six wall you put it under compression that's okay because you have the same mass in the wall we're going to just fill up all of our cavities and that's going to be step one so step one is this in the wall and the ceiling though we're going to go double layer we want as much mass as possible when we're thinking about an acoustical environment and that's why we're going to go two layers in the ceiling, one in the walls, and then we're also gonna be adding the sauna fan. There's two other issues I would just point out real quick. One is the insulation. Now I know that there's lots of people on the market and they will talk about using mineral wool for doing soundproofing. And yes, it works, but I'm gonna say that this is 95% as effective and half the price. Call me cheap, but I'm gonna be using this for the rest of my life, right? This is also next gen, so it's easy to work with. It doesn't make your arms itchy or anything, so it's pretty cool. Now you put in two layers, okay? You wanna stagger your joints, because soundproofing is all about managing the movement of air. And if you can eliminate air movement and then you add mass on top of that, you get a really effective sound barrier. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna finish strapping the ceiling and then we're gonna be installing our sauna pan, green board. And then the secret to success here, because my client wants pot lights. And when you're soundproofing this room, you have to create a layer of soundproofing and then you have to build inside that. So what we're gonna do is after we get the green board up, we're gonna actually strap the ceiling again with two by threes. They'll create an inch and a half space so that we can drill out the location for the pot lights and after the green board is up, the electrician's gonna come back and run the wire for the locations. And then we'll come back in here, we'll install the drywall, drill the holes, and all of that wiring will be on this side of the soundproofing barrier. And so our drywall is gonna be fire rated and that'll have lots of mass in it. And that'll be part of the solution, but the green board isn't going to have any holes or any air leaks. And that is gonna make the biggest difference in that, that transfer of noise from this room upstairs. All right, now the strapping's up, quick tip. When we put our board up, we're gonna wanna know where the strapping is over here. I didn't use a laser level to install this. It's just to get the material up in the air. So I'm gonna make a mark with a marker, in the middle of all these strappings. It doesn't matter if you have plastic or paper-faced insulation, just mark your wall. Even the top of your frame sometimes will work. Easily identify where you're gonna start. And then over here at the edge of the board, you can tell, right? Makes life simple. We're gonna use the drywall lift to throw this up in place. Traditionally, when I'm working in these environments, I don't trust the walls are square. I'm curious though, because <laughs> the nature of this panel, I would love it if this was square. Make my life so much easier, right? So we're gonna give it a try. But generally what I do is I'll measure off the wall 45, 46 inches and then I'll install the second piece and then I'll measure back and then cut it and install the first piece. Usually the only way to get that angle perfect. We'll see if we can get lucky. Now this is my sauna pan insulation panel currently being sold at Home Depot in Canada with very limited availability in the United States. If you want to get this product where you live you got to scream and yell a little bit and uh, let them know that you're really interested in it. I'm going to go this way keep these feet against the outside wall and there we go. We'll just drive this over We'll check the framing. Well, actually, that's not bad there. <laughs> I might get lucky. I'm gonna back it up a little bit. I gotta get past my two by four on the wall. And the screw. <laughs> All right. Wow. 
Wow, I got lucky. All right, now remember, the reason I went quick and simple and dirty here is because I'm gonna add another layer of strapping underneath all this after the wiring is run, and I'm gonna go with a full sheet of drywall from end to end. So I'm not concerned about situations like this. I'm not gonna take the time to put more strapping up here. I'm gonna screw at that location, right? And that board will be held in place, and then we'll install the next piece and so on and so on. We'll stagger our joints, won't be a problem at all. We're using a one and five eighths drywall screw to go through the one inch board and a three quarter strap. If I install the screw head flush, I guarantee I can't puncture any other wiring or plumbing or anything else that's in the ceiling that's being hidden by the insulation. And that is plenty of grab. Just wanna get it up there snug as a bug in a rug. I'm just gonna throw about 12 screws for each panel. The less fasteners, the better at this stage because every fastener is made of metal and will transmit sound. <laughs> so, less is more. I'm gonna stick about 12 and I'm gonna throw up a few more panels and show you how to stagger these joints. We'll just jump into a time-lapse real quick. I'm gonna save you all the gory details of watching me install every single piece, but I'll show you this. Just make sure you measure off where your heat ducts are, okay? And then you can draw with a circle with the marker. Working with this stuff, marker's your best friend. You can draw a circle where your heat run is. Grab a handsaw. This is a drywall saw. Okay, and it is gonna run you slower than drywall. Don't be frustrated, okay? It is a very densely packed fiber, but it will get the job done. Or you can use a cutout tool. Again, this kind of dust is brutal. You probably want to have a mask on when you do it. Again, that's not the tool, that's the density of the material. You'll get it done. There we go. Now, once I get all the ceiling in, we'll just come back into camera. We'll talk about getting the walls installed and how we're gonna seal the gaps between panels. Cause you'll notice right over here, there's a 1 8 inch gap. I didn't get the panel perfectly squared off, but the, I'll show you the secret for closing up those gaps, the materials you wanna use and all the rest of the board. We wanna finish the ceiling and then get the walls on. All right, so that we're, we're creating an overlap. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. My job today is to get the rest of the screen board on so that the electrician can come and do his job later. All right, so next day we had the electrician come in and he ran the loops for our lights. But I just wanted to walk through the assembly here just to make sure that we're all clear. We'll start up here in between the joist cavity, two layers of R20 fiberglass pink next gen insulation. And then we use a one by three strapping nailed to the joist. And then the green board is screwed to the strapping and slightly I'm talking six to eight screws per sheet four by eight and then we strapped over top of the strapping with a three inch construction screw through a two by three then we run the wiring this wiring is actually stapled to the side so it's up to code this will get tucked in like this when we put the drywall on and then when it's time we'll install drywall to this and then we can drill out the hole connect the wire to the box tuck it up the hole into this little cavity space here that gives us the green board 100 percent continuity on the ceiling it'll also give us the ability to bring the soundboard right up to the side and encapsulate the room all the walls the ceiling is going to be green board to green board and then we can use an acoustic sealant or an spray foam for any small gaps or cracks to get rid of any air leaked possibilities. And this is how you get pot lights in the ceiling and keep the sound down. If we put drywall right directly over top of the green board, I'd have to drill that out too for every pot light. And those six holes would eliminate all of the work that we put into this room. I know it sounds like a lot of work, a lot of material, but you're either going to get it right or you're not. If you want a really quiet soundproof room, you got to go with that kind of integrity, okay? I know in school they don't do you any favors. They tell you 50% to pass, 80% makes you a genius. But in a construction situation like this, you have to be somewhere between 99 and 100% of what you do. It's all about doing it right. It's integrity. There's no such thing as, well, I did soundproof 85%. No. That'll be noisy as hell. Now we got a couple of other issues here I wanted to show. The electrician brand wire and then he closed up again. That was nice. Looks like a crime scene. <laughs> I want to bring your attention up here and I'm going to open up this cavity here a little bit, but I'm going to cut on the stud so I can tape it up really easily afterwards. All right. Look at this gap. The insulation fell. When you're working, if you see something like that, stop what you're doing because that's the outside. That's going to be cold air in the winter time, and that's going to have condensation. That's going to make the insulation wet, which is going to destroy the R value year after year after year. It gets worse, worse, worse. Then the studs start to rot. Then the mold starts to show up. This is what we're dealing with. In construction, we can't have that. That's my exterior wall. Now you'll see that around here, they've got this purple foam. When they built this house, before they did the insulation and the rim joist, they did a thin layer of spray foam around the entire room joist, just to create that perfect air seal on that part of the house. But this should be lifted back up into position because I know it fits. I just know that whatever happened, it's slumped. And just because I'm gonna make sure 
I can't afford to have an issue here. Double check. Yeah, this one's slumped too. There we go. Now we got good contact. You gotta love an electrician because they do a great job of meeting the electrical code. But when they're fussing around with your vapor barrier and your insulation, make sure you follow up that everything is still closed up properly. That one little dark space behind the plastic is gonna end up destroying all the work in this room. For the record, when you're opening up a wall, if you cut in the middle of the joist, you have something behind it to put pressure on to get a good seal. And if you cut straight, you can repair something rather simple without having to use a whole roll of tape. Now, when it comes to doing lighting in a theater room, you've really got two options. You're going to see real common in a lot of theaters, they're going to have like wall lights, like sconce. Because you can have a box, you can putty pad it, and it generally, it's a pretty decent way to seal it up. In a ceiling, however, if you want pot lights, there's two ways to do it. You can create a box that your pot light can be cut into out of the green board. Really five-sided box. Or you can install all your green board nice and tight, and then you can run another layer of strapping, that's a two by three, because what this does is it gives you something you can staple. You can staple in the side, run your wiring, and then what you've got is a place where your wiring can go while you're drywalling, and then you can drill your hole, and then you can wire your device box, you can put it up through the hole, slide it to the side, and then install your pot light, and you're not breaking through your sound barrier. Having a continuous barrier of sonopan is the secret to success here, okay? So remember, if air moves, sound travels. By sealing all of this up really good and then dropping the ceiling another inch and a half, I know everybody's like, oh, but the space, nonsense. If you're gonna go for soundproofing, the most important thing is the sound. Everything else gets sacrificed in every decision you make. So complete layer of sound and pan, and then we're gonna seal it all up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw a couple panels on the wall. I'm gonna show you how to seal it up properly. That way you are ready to roll. The thing about this stuff is it is super lightweight. Kinda. It weighs about the same amount as a sheet of drywall. We're gonna install this with one and five eighths drywall screws. That is going to give us all of the support we need. We don't wanna go use too many screws. Okay, we're literally just talking about the perimeter, something to keep it in place. When the drywall gets installed, we're gonna use a two and a half inch drywall screw and that'll finish connecting everything. The less pieces of metal you have in the wall, the better off you are. We just wanna have enough to hold this in place. And, to hold the board in place so that I can roto zip out the window. That's right, you can use the drywall cutout tool on Sonopan to cut everything out of the way. These fibers are pretty hard on the mouth. Wear a mask when you cut it. And this is where we're gonna run into problems, right? Because whenever you build with wood, it's never as tight a seal as you'd like it to be. Now there are two ways to seal up gaps and air movement. One of them is just this, the black goop. This is called the Acousta Seal and you will know this if you're in the business, it's a product we use with Vapor Barrier. It's how we seal the plastic to wood, or plastic to metal framing even. And it works like a charm in this scenario as well. So you wanna treat this like a caulking. You wanna caulk all of your joints. It's that simple. That gets rid of any of the air that passes between the boards. Now this stuff doesn't dry. So you put a nice thick bead here, okay? And you don't wipe it in, you don't worry about it, you don't tool it, you don't finger it, okay? Just get it in, get it on and get it done. All right. And this is a little bit messy, but that's fine. We're not gonna get our knickers in a knot over that, okay? Bam, okay. That's way number one. Second option is if you have holes, you can use expansion foam. Now, I don't expect everybody to have a fancy gun, so I'm not gonna show you that, but I've got a gap right here. And this board is because of the roof and compression, I'm not a big fan. So what I am gonna do, instead of using caulking in the middle of the room and having the black goo dri dripping everywhere, I'm just gonna use the foam. It's under compression and it's slow. I mean, it's the more pressure you use on the tip, the more foam comes out, right? So you should be able to keep this inverted. Oh, brand new cans, sensitive. Here we go. Nice gentle bead. The trick with this is having the can as upright as possible so that you're not just pushing all the gas out of the can. Here we go. The combination of these two products will work to seal up every one of your gaps. I know it's a labor of love, right? But when it comes right down to it, when you're soundproofing, you can do 95% soundproofing and it's no different than 50%, okay? So if you're gonna do it at all, use every ounce of integrity that you got in your body and seal every gap and crack, all right? Once you've got all that done, you're ready to hang drywall. All right, so before I tackle the heat, I just wanted to deal with this mess. Yep, that's not useful at all. I'm all for having a little extra Wire, it's nice if you're wiring to be able to work down here instead of over your heart, because that makes life a lot easier. Having them the same length is gonna help with that. I don't have 10 pounds of wire hanging down out of that ceiling. I can manage installing drywall in that scenario. There we go. 
Okay, now moving on. Here's my duck. This hole is cut pretty much exactly to what I need, but that's not really what I want to go for. I want to have a bigger hole so I can actually get a drill in there and add a screw later. And I've got to get my tools in here to crimp this. So I'm going to cut the hole much bigger than I need. And then we will come, come back with spray foam to finish that off. Yes, I am. God bless it. All right, here we go. Okay, now this duct, it's not moving anywhere. Oh, here we go, we can go to here. Good, then I can screw it and then stick it back up. Here's a $30 tool everybody should own. This is crimpers. It's uh, three blades on two. And basically what we do here, I'll start on this side, is you take a six inch pipe and you make it just a little bit smaller by crimping it. So it's the same amount of material, but it's zigzagging back and forth. It's like driving through the country on a highway versus a road that goes around a river or, or a lake, right? It takes forever zigzagging around. This shortens the distance of the diameter of this pipe so that I can slide an existing pipe over top. I could have crimped the metal that I'm gonna use as my extension and stuck it in, but then I'd be causing resistance right at the last point. And we don't want that. So by crimping the pipe in the ceiling, I'm not interrupting with the airflow or the efficiency of the system. Boom, nice. Now I got a little six inch extension. Because what I'm doing is I'm calculating my extension from the green plus my framing plus 5 8 drywall plus the fact that this will squeeze up. Okay, bam, there we go. Now that is a nice piece of ductwork. And because I'm hanging nice and low here, I'm gonna get either one of the right screws or the, change my bit. Got two of the buggers here. All right, that's right there. There we go. One on the other side here. Good. Now we'll check to see how much height we get. There we go. So now when I go and install my drywall, it'll be sitting on the duct. Okay. And it'll have resistance, which is perfect. So then when I come back with my roto zip tool, I just go in and find the edge, skip it, and zip it. That's problem solved there. We also have a problem in the corner dealing with the plumbing. So let's go tackle that mess. Now you'll notice that the way they got this hooked up here, they're not using a frost-free line. So they're using a quarter turn shutoff valve and then a bleeder valve. Now when you turn the water off and you open this up, it lets whatever water is in that line drain back into the room, which could be a little messy, so have yourself a pail. But it's one way to guarantee that there's no water in your hose bib. The other way is you turn it off, go outside, get a vacuum, and like literally vacuum the line right out, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a first piece of green board here. 26 and three quarters is my measurement. I've already checked the entire bulkhead. It's all perfectly straight. So we're just gonna cut a few of those, but for now, 26 and three quarters, okay? Let me show you how to cut sonopan green board. With your Olfen knife, you wanna to go to the second line on your blade. That's the perfect depth. Lock it in, use your drywall square. Get a score. All right, now move that out of the way. Watch the magic happen. Now you start at the top, buried right in there. Use a little bit of force. Okay. Done. That's about as pretty as it cuts, okay? Don't get worked up over the details. If you want it prettier on the back side, you gotta cut it a little bit more. And then you're gonna end up scoring the sheet behind you. I only got a bit of a scratch. The secret here is we're gonna put this up and I wanna have a hole in this board right where I wanna be reaching up. So let's go 11 inches in the middle. 13, yeah, it's right in the middle. 11 inches this way. That's my middle, okay? Now. To make this effective, you have to remember the end from the beginning. We're going to be putting our drywall over top of this. I can put a nine inch door on it, which is an eight by eight hole. So there's four, there's eight, there's four, there's eight. So there's my hole. That's for the drywall. Now, if I make an eight inch hole here, then I just need to get myself like a 12 inch piece of green board that I can rest on top after I install this part of the soffit. That makes any sense. If not, just keep watching. We'll show you what we do. Here we go. Same thing.
Okay, I'm gonna make a trap door. Done. All right, in case you're wondering, a 26 inch span is perfectly acceptable when you're working with 5 8 drywall. The reinforcing of that, dry, of that fiber makes this really doable. All right. And this is why God invented showers. All right, and make sure we're flush here. Okay. Okay, now I got my trap door and my sauna pan. I'm gonna use a two and a half inch screw right here in the middle. And so when you reach up, acts as a little 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 door handle. So as long as that screw's in the middle, you know you're gonna have a good good seal. Okay. There we go. So now we've got our green board in place. We've got an ability to access that. We know when we put our drywall over, we're just gonna cut an eight by eight hole here. That's problem solved. We've got the ductwork solved. We've got that solved. I think now it's time to throw up our first sheet of drywall. But first, before the drywall, I've gotta put a couple more pieces of the green board on the soffit. One step at a time, Jeff, don't get ahead of yourself. We wanna have a nice tight seal here. So we'll get another piece underneath, a couple pieces on the side, then we'll jump into some drywall. You'll be able to see the whole assembly come together really well then. Now for everybody who has an issue with a window like this, this is actually, it looks like, is it one and a quarter inch? Yeah, one and a quarter inch framing. And then my board comes right to here. Okay, I'll give you an idea what's going on. We can see our concrete foundation. One of the best things you can do is take your green board right up against that. That way you actually have a thermal bridge here as well up against your concrete. So you don't have your drywall in contact with your masonry. If I just go back here with drywall or all wood, I don't have a thermal break anymore because wood is a lousy insulator when it's that thin. So I'm gonna use the green board and then I'm gonna go five eighths over top. It's gonna come about the same thickness. And then I'm just gonna add this one little piece of trim that caps that joint of the drywall and the wood together and paint it all in. It's gonna be absolutely seamless. Wow, thank God I got somebody on the site helping me out. Matt just reminded me that I didn't spray foam this gap yet. And that's really key, right? No air leaks in the ceiling. All right. Uh. Working with these cans upside down, you sure lose a lot of the air, but. Okay, mission accomplished. <laughs> Thank you.